To my beloved brethren and God's holy people across the globe, welcome to another program in the series, A Word to the Nation broadcast. I am Pastor Carol Wilson, your humble servant, and I encourage you to spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule and allow the Lord to speak to your hearts. Good morning, brothers and sisters everywhere. Thank you for joining us again this morning. For today, we will continue from last week as we further explore the theme, Confidence in God's Comprehensive Protection, Part 2. If you missed last week's presentation, we encourage you to go back and listen before continuing to Part 2. As the theme suggests, God has provided a foolproof security coverage for His people. Our scripture reading is the same as last week, taken from Psalm 27, 1 to 14, reading from the New King James Version. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of mine enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Last week we spent the time in verse 1 talking about David's utterance of confidence in God's comprehensive protection, having nothing or no one to fear. This week we will continue in verse 2. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foe, they stumbled and fell. Note, this act is partially responsible for the level of assurance David had in God. He was able to reflect on deliverances he had experienced in the past. He said he noted that every time without fail, when evil people, even his adversaries and foes, came up against him to devour him, they stumble and fall. And so he knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that God was manifesting his comprehensive protection over him. In all your situations, never doubt God. Like David, if you take time out to reflect 
on the goodness of God, before long you will notice a pattern of his comprehensive protection on you. Therefore, David said, For this reason, going forward, though a battalion set ambush against me, my heart shall not fear. Though conflict may rise against me, in this I will be confident. David said, I have only one focus and desire of the Lord, and I am going to wholeheartedly pursue it, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty and splendor of the Lord and constantly seek him in his temple. Equally, if this is your focus and desire always to be in God's presence, you will never have to worry about your safety from the enemy's assault. Hear now the confidence of David's expectation just flowing from him. For I am confident that in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe. He will conceal me. He will hide me in his tabernacle. He will set me high upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Hallelujah. In this passage in Psalm 27, David wrote with a constant interchange between his confidence and expectations, his past experiences and his determination to please God at all times dwelling in his presence. He says, Therefore, I will not just sit aside with my arms folded, just waiting and doing nothing. Instead, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. I will endeavor to walk in obedience to your words. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. David found delight in seeking after his God and chasing after his comprehensive covering. He continued his plea to his protector. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me and such as breathe out violence. The words of verse 13 is very telling. David said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, he was saying, unless you are prepared to exercise complete confidence in the sovereign Lord, as you face your challenges, you will lose heart and you will be defeated. You might now be facing a situation where your back is against the wall and you feel twice defeated. My encouragement to you this morning is to keep hanging on to that confidence in God. Hebrews 10:35 and 36 says, So don't throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you need endurance so that after you have done God's will, you may receive what was promised. So never undervalue your confidence in God. It has the key to your victory. I quickly share the story of King Sennacherib of Assyria coming to launch an attack against Jerusalem. Although King Ezekiah was aware the army of Assyria was much larger than his army, I want you to carefully note and pattern his winning strategy in 2 Chronicles 32, 1-8. You should spend some time reading this short passage. Ezekiah consulted with his officials. He restricted the availability of water to the enemy. 
He repaired the breaches of his city, the walls and towers. He increased the quantity of weapons of defense available. I will read for you verses 7 and 8. These are the words King Ezekiah used to encourage his people. It says, Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged before the king of Assyria or before the large army that is with him. For there are more with us than with him. He has only human strength, but we have the Lord or God to help us and to fight our battles. So the people relied on the words of King Ezekiah of Judah. This is my encouragement to you this morning. The enemy might seem to outnumber you, but follow Ezekiah's example. Do all that is in your power to do. Repair the breaches in your relationship with God and never forget that there are more with us than are with him. He has only human strength, but we have the Lord or God to help us and to fight our battles. The last verse, uh, verse 14 of our key text completes the admonition by advising us, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. If you are prepared to wait on the Lord, you would have demonstrated your confidence in his comprehensive protection. Amen. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, to wait. Down. Thank you for joining us today for a Word to the Nation broadcast, B145. This is your brother and friend, Carol Wilson, saying, Have a happy Sabbath, a fantastic day, and may the God of heaven bless you real good. Peace and love to you all.